what's up guys uh back again like i said welcome back to uh episode 144 i said 145 first time didn't mean that 144.2 in this review like i said guys doing something a little differently with my reviews breaking them up this time we're going to talk all about the dc books um only got seven to talk about this week uh, so let's get right into it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy, and as always, you leave your opinion in the comment section, tell me what you thought, and if you picked up any of the books I did, what did you think about it? Alright, so we're going to kick it off alphabetically, I like to keep my books alphabetically. Uh, first off, we're going to go off with uh, Aquaman number 39, this is part 5 of Maelstrom. Uh, Jeff Parker and uh, what is uh, Paul uh, Pelletier who does the artwork good cover very nice cover this continues so last time we left off guys we saw Arthur came face to face with Atalanta aka his mother his mom his mommy dearest is Akazama, uh, yeah, anyway, his mother, basically, and, uh, Arthur clearly recognizes her right off the bat, he knows who she is, uh, however, there's a twist to it, she doesn't really believe that he is her son. She says it in this. I'm not going to spoil everything what she says, but uh, she fights Arthur. And of course, if you are a loving son, you never want to fight your mom. You never want to see that. And I've seen storytelling like this before, where Arthur is more playing more defensive than offensive. Uh, although Arthur has no problem slugging or knocking the shit out of his mother's like. Uh, subjects uh, and uh, it's kind of funny just seeing uh, Mira kind of play off the you know kind of the little bit of like oh you're, you're you know well your mom's pretty pretty aggressive and things you know that that whole thing you know the, the wife never seen the mom yet or and uh, some very interesting detail going into especially a certain lava god that I think we all should know uh, was really interesting as well but hopefully Atlantia will recognize that Arthur Arthur will get through to his mom that I am your son I'm not Orm because she knows Orm but she doesn't know Arthur and I'm hoping they keep that intact and I hope they uh, do a good job with that but I enjoyed this very much. Very good indeed. Uh, I just hope everything works out for Arthur and his mom. Uh, let's move on to Batman. Greg Capula, Scott Snyder. This is 39, the 39th issue. Uh, this is part 5 of Endgame. Oh boy. Uh, where do I begin with this? Oh, shit. <laughs> That's the best thing I can describe. Shit. Uh, things are not looking well for Gotham. Things are not looking well for Goth for Batman's allies. And I'm talking about a loyal ally. Holy shit. I did not see that coming. Uh, Bruce starts to realize that the cure to this whole formula that Joker has is somewhere that he didn't expect. I'm not going to spoil where it is, but he realizes that he needs a little help and not just from his allies like Bluebird and Jason Todd and Tim Drake and even Barbara Gordon. No, he needs help from some more help, unlikely help. I'm not going to spoil who those people are, 
Uh, but they are from his rogues gallery, but I'm not going to spoil who they are. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just seeing what happens to that certain loyal ally that's been with Batman ever since. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus. But, uh, other than that, this is really intense. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, very intense. Let's move on to Deathstroke number five. Tony Daniels, sir, I love your artwork. Your artwork is beautiful, and yeah, don't let this cover. This is not false advertising, guys. This shit goes down in this book. I say half of this, half of the book is basically a battle with Batman and Deathstroke. Deathstroke realizes that, you know, you come to, you come to Gotham, you're, you're, you're not going to not run into Batman. Batman wants to know what Deathstroke is doing in Gotham, and they have a fight out. Their, Deathstroke is communicating with his fists. And throughout the monologuing, like Deathstroke is talking to us, the reader, he's telling us, like, yo, Batman is no joke. You know, I, I'm, how, how am I not taking this guy out in two steps? What is wrong with me? And he's starting to realize that he is different. He feels that he should have been able to take Batman out in two steps, two, two hits, no problem. And he realized that not only is he different, not only that the fact that he's younger. Uh, not only the fact that he's still wearing that mask that only held like one eye, you know, he only had like one. That remember, Deathstroke is young now, so he's got both eyes again. So he he started to say, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe you know, the mask is really playing a factor into it. Uh, and you got you got Harley over there just rooting on Batman, like get him, Batman, get him. Like it's just like Harley rooting on Batman. You know, it's so funny. Uh, but more importantly, the fight goes on, I think, for about six or seven or ten pages in this. And it's to the point where even Deathstroke even says, I can't believe I'm fighting dirty now. Deathstroke, fighting dirty. It was like, whoa, this ain't the same Deathstroke I remember reading, you know. But, uh, it was a very intense fight, and... Then that leads us to what's going on with Jericho and his sister, Rose. I do love the new look for Rose. I love the new, I think that's a cool look for her. I like that look. Uh, Jericho realizes that, you know, he he can't trust his grandfather. Um, he can't really trust his powers. And Rose is telling him, look, I'm taking you somewhere where we're able to, able to help you control your powers, little brother. Uh... And as soon as they, they come into contact with the man that they're supposed to meet. And somebody from a couple of previous issues. And right from the get-go, I'm like, this ain't going to end well. And right there and then, uh, Jericho is like, I can't read his mind. But I, I can read. I don't even have to read his mind. I can tell you right just off the sheer of his, uh, his uh, aura, this character. I'm not going to spoil who it is. He already knows this guy has dark intentions, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Especially at the end, what happens? But uh, this was a good issue, very intense issue, very action-packed. But I like the story-driven side with brother and sister between Rose and Jericho. She truly, truly loves her brother, and she doesn't want anything bad to happen to to him. So I'm like, okay, Rose. But uh, if you are an older sibling, you can understand that. You know, you don't want to see anything happen to your younger siblings, uh, especially if you love them. Uh, and we get to see that with Rose in this. But uh, very good. Action-packed indeed. Well done, Mr. Daniels. Well done. All right, so we move on to the fastest man alive, The Flash, number 39. Uh, ben Diddy Jensen and Brent Booth does the artwork here. Uh, I 
don't mind Brett Booth's artwork. It just sometimes he draws everybody with elongated faces. I don't like that. Like everybody has like this long face. But in this, more and more people are starting to see that uh, future Flash, or as my bro Blue Goblin says, Punisher Flash is really he's going for keeps you know he, he 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 will kill if need be iris is starting to get into it and uh we're, and a lot of people are starting to see that also in terms of what's going on with barry in the savage uh savage uh speed force he's still trying to he's accompanied with the others that are in the speed force to this temple of trying to get means of escaping and it gets really Jurassic Park in this and I'm, I'm dead serious about that this the scenes where Barry and uh, the other inhabitants of the uh, Savage Speed Force remind me of the scenes uh, in Jurassic Park 3 when they're running from the pterodons it was like oh shit you know stuff like that it was pretty intense Flash Future Flash and the present, you know, and is uh, on the track of uh, this individual who, who looks like the Shade, but also looks like a combination of the Shade and the Ghost Rider. That's the best way I can describe it. And uh, he starts to beat this guy down pretty bad. And uh, Patty comes in and is like, what is wrong with you? He And he does some things which I figured they were going to go with. And people are seeing this. What goes on once again? What goes on with uh, Flat Barry in the Savage Speed Force is really interesting too, because finally he starts to realize that maybe this was all a big fat hoax in terms of the inhabitants. And when he starts to read the the uh, like the hieroglyphics on the temple where they're at, he starts to put two and two together. It's like I've been hoodwinked. And I'm going to leave it at that. This was good. This was really good. Ben Diddy does a good job with this. But, uh, yeah. Very intense. And it makes me wonder what the hell is going to happen when Barry comes back. Will people look at Flash the same? Will Patty look at Flash the same? Or will they really? Will, or will they be both in the same way they'll start to say, Oh, that's not the real Flash. That's the real Flash right there. Who is this guy right here? Things like that. Good stuff, though. Move on to He-Man and the Internia War, Internia Wars, uh, number three. Love that cover, Shira on the cover. Uh, Abinet and Mahan, artwork is great. This is all about Shira, and um, her. What are, what is she trying to get? Uh, Um, uh, they're trying to find a, a thing called the Eye of Chrono, and uh, it's Shira uh, along with some of the other Eternians, you know, as well as Stratos is here. It's good to see Stratos. Uh, Stratos is here, and um, he's helping Shira, and he comes into contact with uh, a sort of Avery Aryan character who, who is like, you know, Stratos with his people are called the Ar Avery. How do you pronounce his um, people's? Um, what are they called? Uh, Arians. A Arians. Uh, yeah, I'm probably butchering the name. I apologize. But, uh, they also come in contact with a villain. I'll show you right here what he looks like. Uh, this is him right here. His name is uh, Voltar. And right off the bat, Stratos says right there, he's mine. And these two go at it big time. Uh, there's some history between them. Good stuff, not going to spoil everything. But in the meantime, also two others are watching Shira. And uh, 
Shira pretty much comes into contact uh, with these two individuals. Uh, they're called Catra uh, and Scorpina. Uh, I thought it was a female clawful. I was like, wait, there's no female clawful. But Catra um, is like this individual can turn it, I guess, to different morph into different big cats. And Scorpina, well, her name kind of already you can already tell probably what she is. She's like a female scorpion-like character, and uh, Shira knows them. And they're like really honored. Like I can't believe us. Believe that you knew who we are. And she's like, of course I do. We fought together. Perhaps you remember me when I was under the name Despara. And right off the bat, that instantly puts them into a rage of like the fuck. And they just come at her. However, the princess of power takes them down. We all should know that was going to happen. And uh, it ends on a dun 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 moment because. Shira comes face to face with somebody I was not really expecting so soon, but I was like, ooh, ooh, okay, where is this going? I'm liking this, uh, but I think you all should know who I'm talking about. And man, does he look fierce. Good stuff for him. Very good stuff. And you want to talk about good stuff? Let's keep it going with Mortal Kombat X number three. Uh, Kelson, uh, Vido, Reno, Albert. This was great. This was great. We're only three issues in, and I'm surprised my voice breaking. Excuse me. This is good stuff. For all of us who are Mortal Kombat fans out there who are gearing up for that game in in April this right here gives us more focus into uh, what happened before the game this is part three of blood ties uh, we got Kulto Khan well no 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 yeah Kulto Khan yeah that's Kulto Khan versus Goro on the cover now does that happen in this book fuck yes it does excuse my language yes indeed um, so the individuals that are in this book, I'll, I'll let, I'll give you all who's in the book, like characters wise. We got Kulto Khan, we got Goro, we got Raiko. I was like, whoa, Raiko. Uh, we got Movado, who is, uh, the leader of the Red Dragon, Cl Red Dragon in Outworld. Uh, we got Reptile, uh, who is, uh, Kulto Khan's minister of spies. He's like, the spy for Kulto Khan. We got uh, Melina, who is a, uh, you know, kind of the opposition to Kulto Khan. We got Rain, Rain, who is Melina's loyalist. We got Devora. We got the 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 mysterious mercenary who a lot of us are probably wondering will he be in the game as well? Uh, Iran Black, and then we got uh, Fira and Tor. You know, the big man and the, the little woman on her his back you talk about action packed yes in this right off the bat Kulto Khan sends his father out to take out Goro gives his father I'm gonna spoil this Shao Khan's hammer alright the fight between uh, what is Shao uh, Kulto Khan's father's name, um, Kulto Kiez, I hope I'm saying it right, he, um, sends him out. Goro, with a little help from Rain, is able to kill Kulto Khan's father. Takes the hammer of Shao Khan, literally obliterates his head. Not even gonna spoil, I'm gonna spoil that. Just take, wham, one, and his head explodes. Uh, what rain does is block out the sun. So we're getting a little indication that the sun powers Kulto Khan's, like, people, his race. Hence, I guess that's why when you see, uh, when Kulto Khan and Raiden, uh, lightning blocks out the sun, you know, and he says, temporarily, yeah, we see that. And, uh... 
word gets back to Colticon about that, what happens. And, uh, yeah, we get a fight between Colticon and Goro. Now, this fight is different because they try the same trick twice, it don't work. Because not only does the sun work with Colticon, but blood kind of works. That's why we see him, you know, when he's cutting his hand and stuff. And he turns like those symbols on him turn blood red. And we get to see that in this, and it was like, oh shit. And fuck Goro. Dude, it's for the prince of the show card. Let's put it like this Koto Khan humbles Goro. Literally. I'm gonna spoil a little bit. He cuts off all his arms and just leaves him there. Goro even says, finish it. Colton says, nope, not going to. Let me read what Colton Khan says. Colt, he says, and he says, what does he say? Okay. He says, he's, Goro says, finish it. First, Goro gets his hand, he's like, no. You know, <laughs> and uh, girl, uh, girl says, finish me. And Colton says, you beg for mercy? And he says, kill me, you bastard. Perhaps I should. No, that will be an act of kindness. Shokanan tradition forbids such sentimental things and just leaves them there. However, Shokanan is, uh, Koltokan's, Kolt, Tolkan is not out of the woodwork. He gets shot by Sonya. Sonya Blade gives him a pop right in the ribs. And he, she, the one thing she says right off the bat, where's my daughter, you bastard? Johnny, we get to see Johnny Cage here. And he's like, I thought you said you were going to let me talk. Johnny's like, let me talk. For and he gives Colto Khan basically an uh, image of what Cassie sh emailed them. A picture of who took them. One of a certain somebody who is was like with him. And there's someone else who is also working with this individual who works with Khan. Uh, you should all know who it is. Uh, yeah, it's Kano. I'm going to spoil it. It is kidnaps uh, Jaquel J uh, and Jacqueline Briggs and Cassie and uh, we also get a little indication of how uh, how Kano got his upgrades on his his eye and everything like that that was interesting but uh, it, it don't it's not all that like centered right there on them because there's some other players involved who want to take the the child of uh, Sonya and Johnny and the daughter of Jax. I'm not going to spoil who that is, but this was terrific. There, there, we're only three issues in it, and I know a lot of people are ahead of me because of the digital issues are already out, but you guys should know me by now. You know, I, I'm more of a hands-on type of guy. I like to have the book in my hand. And I'm glad nobody's really spoiling it for me or what's going on. But all I know is friends have been telling me, good friends have been saying, wait till you get to issue seven. It's going to be good. But it ends on a big cliffhanger. And I'm going to leave it at that. But uh, Mortal Kombat X, number three, this was good. Poor Goro. Uh, the Prince of the Shokan got humbled. And boy, did he get humbled. All right, and we're ending this on Red Lanterns number thirty-nine. Uh, th this I don't know really what to say about this. This was so a uh, uh, guy gets his ass handed to him in the beginning by a baby. I'm not even joking about that. This baby is inhabited by a spirit or so and 
guy has to kind of exercise the spirit from this little child. This little baby right here. I'm, I'm not even joking. This, this little baby right here. And I, I was just like, really? This is what you guys are coming down to for the, the nearly the penultimate issue of the final issue of this series? I'm like, this could have been way better. I, I was a little disappointed in this, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. This did not make me laugh. This not made me go, okay. No, this just made me like, whatever yeah uh, but other than that guys um, that's all the DC I have next up four point three I deliver the Marvel books and then guys that is where you guys can put in your offer you know put in you know the codes you know you guys can say oh can I have that code or something like that but I'm, I want to do it like that because I want to give everybody at least an opportunity to grab one of the 12 Marvel books that I have. But other than that, this is Mamre and Kid, the Omni Geek High Lord of New York, saying peace. One love. Stay tuned. Keep it real, guys. I'll see you guys with the next review. Take care.